the run backs seemingly are finally freed and you got to see on full display just what they are capable of you also got to see them taking out their frustrations of not getting enough carries by the intensity with which they ran my gosh justice haynes jam miller and then welcome back richard young mm. my question is do we continue to ride this trend with the running backs who seem to be coming alive at the right time is it sustainable and let me also ask this other question, guys. Is Richard Young the extra ingredient maybe our backfield needed that can kind of allow us to do a lot more, especially as LSU approaches? The run game, it was amazing. That's what I want to see. I want to see us get back to where we're wearing defenses out. Because, again, Smoke will tell you this. As you get into that back end of that season, everybody's beat up. Everybody's tired. So if you have – two, three solid running backs and an offensive line that can go out and dominate and wear defenses down. Defenses wear down a lot faster the back half of the season than they do the first half. Those bumps and those bruises, oh, they, they you feel them at this point. So if Bama's going to be successful moving forward, it's going to have to go through the run game. LSU has shown us that the RPO can be their kryptonite. If Jalen Milrow is truly healthy in terms of being able to run the ball, he gets that burst back. We got these backs who, like I said, are coming alive at the right time. Could we not only replicate what Texas A&M was able to do to LSU, but also maybe cause some more damage? What you said, what LSU, what A&M did to LSU with Marcel Reed, yes. There's some vulnerabilities in terms of RPO. When you run RPO, you A, you got to know how to call it. B, you got to know how to teach it. And C, mm -hmm. whoever's running it got to be able to read that second-level defender first level defender, and let the ball rip. I don't I don't believe that's Jalen Milrose's wheelhouse. And I don't believe that's Kalen DeBoer or Coach Sheridan's wheelhouse in terms of understanding when to call it, how to call it, and how to teach it. Not saying that you can't get that done. But the fact that A&M did that to LSU, I don't believe that Alabama has to copy that method to mm. do it because okay. you've seen – teams been able to run the ball on LSU and also run the quarterback yep. against LSU. And the way that college football is, the dual threat quarterback, which Jalen Milrow is, is the biggest equalizer to the game. And you don't necessarily have to run RPO in order to execute that. You can just go ahead and run your regular zone read. Because when you add the extra element of the third level, to a guy like Jalen Milrow that's not necessarily comfortable with running that type of offense, now you're creating an extra layer of learning for him. I believe that Alabama has enough in their playbook to run the ball mm -hmm. the traditional way if you want to do it out of shotgun or you want to do it out of the pistol. Mm -hmm. You can turn around and line up and attack guys downhill, but also use that quarterback as your second read and also your second ball handler and your, I mean, your ball carrier in order to properly execute what you want in terms of running a football. But I'm a big fan of just traditionally lining up and running a football downhill using the backs that you have and using that heavy offensive line. You're averaging close to 335 pounds as an offensive line. At some point, you have to lean on people, especially mm -hmm. like Harvey just said, you, this is November ball. November ball is when the battle of the trenches come into play. Whoever's strongest in the trenches typically wins. And Bama has strong players in the trenches. Mm -hmm. He's got to lean on that more instead of trying to have Jalen Milrow win the Heisman Trophy by throwing the football and creating explosive plays. Mm -hmm. You got to be dirty at some point. Mm -hmm. And as long as the Alabama staff buys into that as a whole, the players are buying into that as well. And the identity of your team now becomes a physical, demanding mm -hmm. team. And when you run the ball on offense, that toughens you up on defense because what you practice on offense, your defense is going to also have to defend as well during the week. So it's a twofold. Man, get back to running that ball. You see, we got two guys that are capable of taking it to the house. And if you get in the way, they'll kick, they'll kick your doors down. You saw what Justin Haynes did. 
throw a boy. So I'm good with that. Then that opens up the play action. It opens up a whole lot of things. And again, you said something that was so profound. Stop trying to make uh, uh, Jalen Miro this Heisman guy. Just look, win it all. We ain't got time for all that now. Listen, just play within the confines of the offense. I watched that Texas A&M game, and, and Smoke, you're right. LSU is vulnerable to the run. They really mm-hmm. are. You don't have to do a whole lot of razzle-dazzle West Coast stuff. Just get the ball and do what you need to do. Run downhill, and everything goes for open up. 